Welcome back everybody, it'll be the ninth video in the Unreal Engine 5's inventory UI tutorial series. Uh, it's taken Grace here. Uh, in the last video we got our inventory quick use item slot working. Alright, now today we're going to be doing uh, the cycling through of items. So we have uh, picked up a bunch of items now and we want to be able to cycle through all of our filled inventory slots. So uh, right now we're stuck on zero, we can't do anything because we uh, have not done the logic yet for it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our content browser. We're going to make a new folder in content called libraries. We're going to click into that. We're going to go right click, go to blueprint and go to blueprint macro library. So we're going to create two macros. So it's going to ask us to pick a parent class. We're going to want to choose object. Okay, we're going to do, we'll just call this macro library for simplicity's sakes. Okay, so we're going to create two macros, one called next item array. Or actually, we'll just do next array because these are supposed to be reusable throughout your entire project. Previous array. Okay, so we'll create two like that. And... We're going to go next array and we're going to make an input and we're going to make this just array. And we're going to select wild card. So this is this means that it will change its input type to whatever is being plugged into it. And we need to make sure that that's an array. Okay. Next one we're going to make is current array item. And it's going to be a wild card as well, but it'll be a single. The outputs... Another wild card, and it's going to be new array item. Okay, uh, let's just delete previous and just duplicate this so we don't have to do that again. There we go. Okay, we'll start on next. For next, we need to, we'll just drag these out to get give us a bit of room here. Uh, oh, sorry, we need to also add a execution uh, we'll move this to the top. We'll call this execution and e oops, ex execute this one here. And we need to also add one of those to the end here as well. Whoa. There we go. Move this up top and then we'll just get rid of the two. Okay, so we'll just uh, get rid of that for now. So what we need to do is we need to take the array, we need to get our copy and we'll just leave that over there for now uh, next we need to find item and we're gonna plug in the current array item whoops to here and we're also going to grab array again and get last index so it's gonna get the last slot in our index and next we need to drag this out and we need to add one okay and we need to check and see if that, uh, if this is the last index or not. Okay, the next thing we're gonna drag out of here, and we're gonna select, select integer. We're gonna plug this in, okay. Pardon me, there we go. That's how it should be. So um, pick A if this valuable value is true, and it's gonna pick B every other time. So the only time this is gonna pick A is if our new index, if our index is the last index. So it's gonna set it to zero, which is the beginning of our array, uh, beginning of our array. Okay. Uh, after that, we need to get, or pardon me, we need, yeah, we need to get our local integer. Do I just need to say local integer? Local integer. Why is it not coming up? Tell me, local. Local integer. You got to do one word, it looks like. Local integer. We're going to plug that into get. And then we're going to drag it here. We're going to set by ref. And we want to get set integer by ref. Okay. And the value... Uh, for this is going to be the, the select integer value. Okay, so we're going to drag that in and then we're going to drag this out. And we're going to drag get into new array item. Okay. 
We're going to hit save. And to be honest, let's just delete array again. <laughs> and let's just duplicate it. Okay, so everything's the same except for how we... Uh, we got to basically do the opposite. So when we're on the last index, we're going to want to go back to the beginning. Okay, and to do that, we're just going to flippity-flop these. Uh, we'll get rid of this, this node here. And last index is going to be A. And we're going to find, and we're going to get rid of this node here as well. We're going to minus by, whoops. We're going to hit a minus. We're going to get a minus one. And for the Boolean, we're going to check if this is less than or equal to the last index. Or less than or equal to zero. Sorry. We're going to check if it's less than or equal to zero. And that's going to be our function here. So, uh, or our um, variables here. So if our integer is less than zero, it's going to pick A. So it's going to go to the last index. If it is greater than zero, then it's going to pick the index minus one. All right. Okay, so that's all we need to do. And then for the love of God. Okay, they're both there. They both work good. Uh, I'm just going to check previous array. Make sure everything's plugged in, which it looks like it is. Make sure like all these are plugged in or else you're going to get some errors. And then you'll have to come back and be like, why is it not working? But anyways, so now we need to go back to our, in, our uh, HUD class. All right, so we are now in our item management uh, subgraph in our HUD class. Uh, so we're going to do our switchy switch stuff now so um you would have made this in the last video just make a second customer uh a custom event called previous item array and we're gonna actually do some fun stuff now so um just make sure that out of row not found we have our next item array call for this particular custom event okay and this is in the event that we don't actually find like say slot item index for example is minus one it's not going to find a row because our item ideal none or will be none rather. So it'll go down row not found and go to next item. And then it'll actually just rotate through until it hits an item. Um, so yeah. All right. So to get started, we're just going to move previous just out of the way for now. We will just do the logic with next and then we'll duplicate it. Etc. All right. So first we will need to uh, get a branch. And the uh, first thing we need to check is we need to check that the filled item, pardon me, the filled slots is empty so we're gonna say is empty okay um by the way i'm inserting this in this is a re-record i'm inserting this into the old one so there's a couple things here that you guys don't have similar to the last video you guys watched i found errors while editing anyways uh from the true branch so this is if our filled slot is empty we're gonna want to show that uh, our item id or pardon me our item id our um slot is going to be blank so right now it has an apple because that's what we made inside the widget itself when we were designing it uh, but that should be black and blank so that's where we're going to do that here so come over here we're going to copy those and we're going to paste oh boy that is that is one ugly thing so out of true we're going to go into set and i'm actually going to move this down a bit further okay so the Style fill image image is going to be our slot empty slot. Okay, that should all be the same. We'll hit compile just to see if we get that weird error and we don't, so that's great. All right, so if we do have stuff in this filled slot, uh, then we're going to get the macro that we just made. So that'll be new, or uh, sorry, not next array item that. It'll be next array, this macro, the little M here. So that's the one we want. We're going to get our filled slots and we're going to set that as the array and then we're going to get a copy, plug this into the current array and then we need to grab our slot item index and plug that in. So we're going to get our current slot index which will be whatever item we currently have equipped and then it's going to run it into next array and then it's going to flip it and then it's going to set this new array item. All right, so uh, after that, that will successfully switch to our new item. However, um, we need to tell the slot item index that we've increased the integer out of there. So uh, to do that, we are going to get another branch 
we're going to do something slightly similar to the macro that we just did there. Um, so we're going to get a branch and we're going to get the slot item index. And we're going to check if it's equal to our filled slots last index. Okay, so, uh, so if it is equal to our last index, that means we're at the end of our array and we want to go back to the beginning. So we're going to then set our slot index to zero. That will take us back to the beginning. And if it is not equal to our last index, we obviously still have some road to run. So we're going to get item slot index and we're going to plus plus. And we're going to add one and set it. We are then going to, uh, we'll do an output, but we're going to select all of this except for the actual event itself. Right click collapse nodes and we'll do gets next item. And we'll bring that up here to this spot. Let's go back into the gets uh, next item and we're going to basically just grab this output and plug it in there and same with this guy. So just so the code continues to execute. Okay, we'll compile. We will copy all this. We will go back to item management. First, we will plug in our gets next item into our, um, just double click to make a reroute node and just plug it in there. We're gonna get our previous array item and we're going to paste. And it's gonna be more or less the same other than a couple of changes. Okay, we selected all that except for the event and we're gonna collapse that to a node as well. We'll call this gets previous item. Okay, but for this one, we're going to, well, we'll just uh, get this over here beside next now. Let's open that up. Everything will be the same, except obviously we're gonna swap this out for our, can you replace? I was just thinking about that. You can do that in some other things, you can. Okay, we'll just delete it. Get out of false, we will previous, and it'll be at the very bottom. Previous array macro. Plug that in, plug that in, plug that in, and plug that in. All right. So we'll just start over just to make it all, you know, easy to follow. So we're going to be looking and checking if our slot item index equals zero. Because if it does, we're at the beginning of our array and we want to go to the front. So to do that, we'll come out of true and we will set our slot item index to be our filled items, or pardon me, filled slots last index. Okay. If uh, our slot index does not equal zero, that means we have some more row to run as per before. So we'll get our slot item and hit minus minus and we'll decrease it. Okay, we'll plug this in just like we did like the other one and that's what it should look like. All right, hit compile. We're gonna hit, uh, we're gonna go back to item management and then we're gonna plug in our previous item as well. Okay, uh, next we need to actually call these events which we're gonna do with controls. So we're going to go into our player, our player controller Okay, down here, we'll just do IA underscore uh, next item, IA underscore previous item. Okay, we'll grab our HUD. We're going to next item array and make sure we plug into started. If we plug into triggered, it's gonna trigger, it's gonna swap through a bunch of items a bunch of times because this can fire multiple times. It started since we have it on pressed uh, this particular control, then we're going to uh, only fire it once. Previous array item. Okay, that uh, should be all we need to do for now. Let's have a look and see if it works. Add some items and they all cycle through and they all go both ways and they cycle back to the beginning. There. All right, perfect. And hopefully you guys uh, learned something here. Um, we are not quite done yet because we want to be able to use our items. We want to be able to eat that apple and drink that potion and we won't be able to do anything with that for now or the wood or the stone. It's just basically to fill your inventory. But all the uh, food items 
and the key near the end of this tutorial series will be able to actually use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below for uh, any help and feedback for the tutorial series. And uh, haven't plugged this for a while, but just check out my coffee page. It's got uh, lots of stuff there for you guys, including the rest of this tutorial series, so you don't have to wait for the next episode to come out on YouTube. Also has access to my vault, which has uh, UI, 3D, uh, 3D assets, sound effects, etc. And you get access to the Discord where we can all collaborate and talk about all sorts of game stuff. So, hope to see you guys in the next video.